So today I'll be doing an unboxing of a product that I've been meaning to have a look at for quite a while. This is the MSI 770 G45. So it's part of their G series or their gaming series. You can see they got a big red G here. That's what that means. And it has a couple of features that are pretty good. First of all, it has full support for AMD's Phenom 2X4. And it also has full compatibility with Windows 7. It has their green EUP technology included. You know what, I'm actually gonna have a quick sort of zoom in here so that you can actually see what I'm talking about here. Now this board also, like most of the 700 series chipset boards from MSI has support for the brand new Phenom 2 X6s, although that's not marked on the box. You just need to make sure you update the BIOS with your board before you will get support for that. So down here you can see it's AM3 CPU ready, which we've already been through. Comes with some kind of Norton software, supports lossless 24-bit audio. It has their Easy OC switch, which while it's not quite as nice as their OC Genie, it's uh, still a pretty useful little thing. It's got active phase switching, which gives you power savings. So that means that while this motherboard has a certain number of phases to provide to the power under peak load, it can actually reduce how many power phases it's using at idle to make sure that you're using less power at idle because fewer power phases means less wasted power. Also, it features MSI's Unlock CPU core technology, stable unlock. So like so many AMD boards these days, there is support for unlocking the extra cores in AMD's X2 and X3 CPUs that are artificially reduced for sale. So here on the back we've got mostly the same stuff, the active face, all, all solid capacitors, so that's a big one that they've actually got on the back here, and I'm going to just sort of zoom in again here. And it also has support for M-Flash. This is a feature that was missing from MSI boards for a long time. And now we're finding it almost across the board. Allows you to flash the BIOS without a floppy drive or, uh, or using, you know, bootable USB drives or anything like that. You just throw a uh, USB drive on the back of the motherboard and then you boot up to the M-Flash utility and you can flash the BIOS just like that. Inside the motherboard box we will find a variety of things as per the usual arrangement. So let's see what we have. First of all, we have the I.O. Shield. Okay, color-coded for your convenience. Next we have the Drivers and Utilities DVD, do not use that, download the latest off the MSI website. Then we have a quick installation guide, and there doesn't appear to be anything particularly quick about it, it's quite large, oh it's not too bad actually, here let me just unzoom a little bit so you can see how big this guy is, I'm going to turn off my, mother or my monitor so you don't have to contend with that at the back for focusing. So it shows you how to install the CPU, RAM, uh, drives, graphics card. Around to the other side, front panel headers, uh, the power, setting up the BIOS, installing the OS, and installing the drivers and utilities. Very nice. Kind of walks you through the whole process. I mean, really, building a computer is not that hard these days. The manufacturers, cats in the garbage bin, make it so easy for us. Okay, here we have the user guide. This is the Europe version. That's interesting. Check that out. Europe version. Very nice. I'm there in the garbage again. Sorry. Bear with me here. Get out of there. Okay, garbage can has been relocated right there. Okay, so inside the user's guide we will find many different languages. So the actual English portion is only about... Oh, well, it's not that thick. It's only about this much. English, English, English. And then it goes on to Deutsch. Just like that. Okay, so next we've got one IDE cable. Uh, one SATA cable and then one Molex to SATA adapter. That is a fairly bare accessory package as far as cables go, but if you're anything like me, you've probably got about 50 SATA cables lying around anyway. And uh, here we go. Let's just get this motherboard opened up here and we will have a look. All right, so layout. Layout is a pretty standard sort of fare. You've got all of your, so far I noticed that the power adapt or the power connectors are in their ideal location. So your four pin power is up at the top left of the board, exactly where it belongs. And then you've got your AM3 socket. So I'm just gonna pull this sticker off so you can have a better look at the AM3 socket. Along with the AM3 socket, you will also get support for dual channel DDR3, just like all of the CPUs that run on the AM3 socket will require. Then along to this side of the board, we've got our 24 pin connector exactly where it belongs. We've got a fairly beefy looking heatsink on the Northbridge chipset. Okay, then moving down, we have an IDE port 
Okay, so that's a side mounted one for easy access. And then we have kind of a strange arrangement of the SATA ports. So here we've got four right angle SATA ports and then two normal uh, facing right out of the board SATA ports. So that's a kind of a strange, strange decision, but I think I see why they made it. Because these two, or rather these four connectors, could potentially be interfered with by a full length graphics card, whereas this one is not nearly as bad. Down here we've got uh, We've got three USB headers, and then we've got our front panel connectors. Over here we can see the overall layout of the board is quite desirable. So we have one PCI Express 1X connector up at the top, then we have two PCI Express 16X and three PCI. So if you actually install two dual width PCI Express video cards, you'll be left with one PCIe 1X and then two or rather, one PCI slot, so that's pretty much your optimal configuration there. And then we've got the EZOC switch, so it actually comes with instructions written right on the board, which is pretty nice. So here, I'm just going to zoom in even more there and try and position this so you can see what I'm talking about. So the EZOC switch has instructions right here. So it says, mm -mm, default is on one and two, and then 10% is one up, two down, 15% is one down, two up, and then 20% overclock is flipping both of these switches down. Now let's have a look at the I.O. connectivity on the back. So we've got two PS2 ports, and this is an odd one. We've got a serial port. So I guess this motherboard could potentially be used for industrial applications, because so many peripherals that are used in sort of um, industries that aren't quite as up to speed as the technology industry, so something like, uh, you know, mining or um, many, many different industrial applications will still need a serial port. We have six USB 2.0 ports, no USB 3.0 support on this board. It's a relatively value-minded board. Then we have a gigabit Ethernet port and 7.1 audio support. So thank you for checking out my unboxing of the MSI 770 G45.